now. And what does the future look like for the U.S. space program? All tonight. Welcome back to Lewis Field. Tony Sellers and Robert Allen with you. And you see the Carl Albert Titans heading to the sideline as we get ready for action here in the 5A championship. It rained all last night. It rained all of today up until about, oh, 15, 20 minutes ago. Right now, the skies are clearing a little bit. The rain has subsided. You see the temperature at 42, a uh, wind chill down around freezing, and we expect more rain during the game. But uh, right now, just a little bit chilly, great football weather. Great football weather, and considering both these teams are going to run the football, it'll be a little bit of a slick carpet down there for them, but I don't think that'll bother this game at all. In fact, this is, uh, these are two teams you could get really in climate conditions, and it wouldn't matter. Well, Gary Rose told me, he said, I'm not worried about turf shoes. He said, we may go out there barefooted. We're just gonna run the football, and I think Rocky Carter feels the same way. Let's take a look at how these teams progressed through the season and got to this state championship game. As we mentioned, El Reno at 13 and 0. Carl Albert had a rocky start to start the season, but El Reno pretty much breezed through the regular season. Well, and impressively early. Weatherford, who will play for a state championship later today at this same stadium. Chickasha, who's been in the state championship game the last couple of years in 5A, and Elk City, those are three impressive wins. And of course, they did beat Carl Albert 24 and 21. Uh, really, the Southeast game, which was a double overtime win in the first round of the playoffs, that was a tough one for them. And, of course, last week they beat McAllister just by a field goal to make it here to the championship game. El Reno has not been to the state finals since 1981. They have never won a championship. They have lost in the championship game all four times that they made it to the final game. As far as Carl Albert, the two-time defending state champion, their season started out a little roughly. They lost two out of the first three games. They made some adjustments, and after that, it was smooth sailing for the Carl Albert Titans until they got to the El Reno Indians. Uh, they did lose to El Reno during the regular season, and one of those early games they lost, and when you look at losses to Ada and to Ardmore, those, uh, you know, those are good football teams, Tony, but they did, or they were able to avenge the loss to Ardmore in the playoffs. That's a very impressive 42 to 20 victory they had there and then beat Tulsa Kelly last week. Let's go quickly before kickoff to Curtis Fitzpatrick with coach Rocky Carter. Here with El Reno coach Rocky Carter. Rocky, your team's unbeaten. You knocked off Carl Albert earlier in the season. You won the district championship. Seems like all the pressure's on your team. Well, again, you know, it's uh, it was a, a real war. You know, we played Carl Albert the first time and, and uh, our kids realized that that game's over with and yesterday's touchdowns don't mean anything. So Today's a whole new situation, and we're all playing for a whole new uh, opportunity, and that's to be a state champion. So we know today that Carl Albert has got the experience of being here the last two years, and they've won the gold ball the last two years, and I think that's got to give them some confidence. So our kids are just going to have to go in and, and stay focused and be ready to play, and, and a very fine football team in Carl Albert, and again, give themselves a chance to win. Outside. And that's Coach Rocky Carter. Carl Albert is going to be kicking off to El Reno. They lined up in that onside kick formation and now they shift to the regular formation as the place kicker David Hotland gets ready to approach the ball. Tony, one thing too, you mentioned they lined up in the onside kick formation. Expect anything out of Gary Rose this afternoon. Kickoff down to the three yard line, a fake reverse to Carter coming up the near sideline, tripped up at the 18 yard line is Josh Ritchie. And the tackle made on the play by Roberson, Michael Roberson for Carl Albert. First down and 10 yards to go 
For the El Reno Indians, let's take a look at the offensive lineup for El Reno that you'll see this afternoon. The quarterback is Josh Weevil. And in the backfield, Bada Carter. You'll also see Childs there some. Trent Miller, the fullback. The wide receivers, A.J. Haglett and Josh Ritchie. First and 10 from the 19 I backfield, and Carter goes in motion to the near side. Weevil to Miller straight up the middle, and he has stood up after about a three-yard gain. And it'll be second down at about seven yards to go. And Carter is the starting tailback here today. We'll probably see Marshall Childs a little bit in the backfield. Marshall Childs rushed for over 1,400 yards this season, but then was injured, had a strained medial collateral ligament, strained MCL in that double overtime win over Southeast. He is just now coming back. He's playing with a brace. That takes a lot of adjustment, as you know, Tony. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how many snaps he gets. Probably we'll see more action at his other position on the defensive side of the ball at linebacker. Second down and five, they say, as they give Miller forward progress to the 24-yard line. This time Carter again in motion to the near side. Long signal count. We will, will keep it on the option. It's strung out, and he will not be able to turn the corner. Johnny Bazell, the big six foot two, 225 pound senior hauled him down for virtually no gain maybe a loss of a yard and it'll be third down and six with carter motioning out of the backfield there was no option that was strictly a quarterback keeper and johnny bazell did a good job of stringing it out all the way to the sideline and making a big play here we're going to see the replay you see carter go in motion the opposite direction of the play that's to get the defense to overplay that side instead they come back on the other side with weevil and that is bazell coming over to make a fine tackle Ball on the far side hash mark at the 23-yard line. Third down and six. Again, Carter in motion to the left. Back to pass. Weevil, he throws across. He brought to Richie. Completed the 35. Gets a block to the 40. Still on his feet across the 45-yard line. And a first down for the El Reno Indians. Well, Richie on the season, 25 catches for 377 yards. 15.1 a catch. He got about his average there. He is the main receiver, and you got to remember, neither one of these teams put the put, uh, puts the football in the air that much. In fact, Josh Weevil has thrown just 144 passes. It was a crossing route there. They had Fada Carter going in the flat as another receiver on that side, and Richie was able to get one-on-one -on -one coverage and get the catch and the play in the first down. Michael Roberson with the tackle, first and 10 at the 45-yard line. The official says roll the clock, and that confuses El Reno momentarily, and now a stoppage of play as they will reset the football. Opening minutes of the 5A state championship game, this presentation by Southwestern Bell and the Oklahoma State Secondary Schools Activities Association. There you see our officials for today, Walter Davenport, making the call and a handoff across the left side to Carter. And Carter picks up short yardage up to about the 49, a four yard play running around the left side of that El Reno offensive line. Fada Carter is a player, Tony, that can do just about anything. We mentioned in the open, he leads the team in sacks with 15. He played tailback as a uh, sophomore, moved back to the position with the injury to Child, and looked like last week against McAllister, he'd never been gone. 244, uh, 45 yards against a very good defense uh, from the Buffaloes. Second and six, just short of midfield for the El Reno Indians. A good look at Josh Weevil. Counterplay to Carter across midfield, dragging a tackler across the 45 to the 43 in Carl Albert territory. That'll be good for another first down for El Reno. That's a lot of what Fata Carter did last week in that semifinal win over McAllister. Again, you mentioned the counterplay. That is one of the favorites for El Reno. We're going to take a look. You got the uh, guard pulling, coming up through the hole there, gets his block, and then it's Fata Carter just dragging a couple of white shirts down the field for a seven-yard pickup. I know that's a guy you liked that was leading him through there. I, the I right like tackle, him a Mike lot. Little. Mike Little is a warrior, flat out. First and 10, El Reno at the 43 in Carl Albert territory. And off to the fullback, Miller breaks through to the 30, to the 25, 20. He could go all the way, touchdown, he fumbles as he hits the goal line. Let's see, it's gonna be a touchback. The official ruling that he fumbled at the one-yard line, and it was recovered in the end zone by Carl Albert. Some discussion going on, but I think they're going to call this a touchdown, and it's going to be Carl Albert ball. 
I believe they are going to call it a touchback. You see the play 11 players celebrating. Just, uh, you know, that's the one way the weather could really impact this game as far as handling the football. Looked like Miller tried to change hands as he got toward the goal line and ended up losing the football. Unbelievable turn of events as it looked like El Reno was going to roll in on a touchdown by Trent Miller. But just before he crossed the plate of the goal line, the ball was stripped free. Carl Albert recovers, and they avert a touchdown by El Reno, and we take another look at it. Just a straight hand off to the fullback, quick opener. He broke through and was off to the races. Fullback dive play, he's in the clear here. And yeah, you're right, the, the defender who never gave up on it, that was uh, Chad Stuckey who came over and made a nice play. The official's right there on the line. Did the ball cross the plane or did it not? In the official's judgment, it did not. First penalty of the day, illegal procedure call before Carl Albert can get the snap, so they will back it up five yards and it will be first down star at 15. On the offense, still first down. Carl Albert, last time that they played El Reno, Tony, in losing 24-21, really relied on Johnny Bazell and Bazell only. Played a lot of one back. You'll see two backs there all the, all afternoon. Santee Jackson at the top of the eye gets the pitch. Cuts to the outside at the 20 across the 25. And he'll have a gain of about 14 yards as he'll spot it at the 29-yard line. Santee Jackson took over a tailback in the third game of the season. A 5'10", 190-pound junior. He rushed for 765 yards and 12 touchdowns for the Titans. Really did not get comfortable, though, until late in the season. And last week found Bishop Kelly very comforting as he had 149 yards and an 85-yard run to put that ball game away. An equipment problem forces an official's timeout as they try to straighten Jackson out. They'll reset, and it'll be second down and a little bit more than one for the Titans at their own 29-yard line. Bazell, the fullback. Jackson, the tailback, gets the pitch left, cuts inside the block by Bazell, and will have the first down at the 34-yard line in Carl Albert territory. Pickup of about five yards for Santee Jackson. Carl Albert got away with one there. The uh, lineman that was on the far outside, either a tight end or a tackle, on the left side, jumped just a little bit and then rocked back into his stance, and the side judge out there did not pick up on it. So Carl Albert uh, gets a little break there. First down, 10 yards to go for the Titans. High formation, single split receiver to the right. They hand off to the left side to Jackson, sliding along the line. But he is hit quickly as the El Reno defense jumped up to stop Santee Jackson. And we've got a player down on the play. That looks like Richie, uh, Josh Richie down. Mitchell's timeout as the trainers go out to check on Josh Ritchie, Michael Pruitt made the stop for El Reno. Ritchie with the helmet off, and it looks like a possible leg injury, and he is down. That'll give us a chance to take a look momentarily as they work on Josh Ritchie at the offensive lineup for the Carl Albert Titans in this afternoon's game. They're coached by Gary Rose and a very fine staff of assistant coaches, one of the keys to that championship run they've had. Well, sometimes I have to question their judgment. We'll talk about that later in their, their fashion for ball games. But they are. Their staff that's been together. They did lose Jeff Craig, the offensive coordinator, who went over to Dell City. And Dell City, of course, uh, made the playoffs, won their first round game with Midwest City. And that kind of shows you that some of, the, uh, some of the school districts around the state might start picking off some of these assistant coaches that uh, Gary Rose has at, uh, at Carl Albert. Trainer's working on Josh Ritchie, and he is up and is going to be able to go off the field on his own power. He wants to go back to the huddle, but I think he's going to have to come out. And Robert, this will give us a chance to look at the keys to the game, and they're pretty simple today. Well, actually, we're going to go with first. Who's the first one, for instance, to 200 yards rushing? That's a goal of both teams. You the first to 200. you got a good chance to win. How about the first to score three touchdowns? That's also important in winning this ball game. And if there's a negative stat, First team to throw 10 or more passes. They're trying to come back there in trouble. Second down, about seven yards to go. Man in motion to the left. Hand off to Bazell. He's got short yardage before he stacked up at the 32-yard line. And that'll bring up a third down and long. And it'll be interesting to see if we see our first pass 
of the game in this situation. Now, yeah, Carl Albert at times have gone, they've gone a complete game without putting the football in the air. Not that they're not capable of doing it, it's just Gary Rose feels a whole lot more comfortable handing the ball to either Santee Jackson or Johnny Bazell. By the way, you, I'm not sure you can accurately get a good feel for how strong Bazell is. This is a very strong 18-year-old man. Third down, swing pass, thrown out to Jackson. He's around the corner at the 40, 45, and steps out of bounds just across midfield, forced out of bounds for El Reno by A.J. Hagland, the junior. 5'8", 141-pound defensive back, and Santee Jackson gives Carl Albert the first down. They're going to spot it just across the midfield stripe into El Reno territory. Well, when Carl Albert does throw the ball, they're going to throw it in this fashion. Just a little swing pass. Landon Cordray, the quarterback, gets out there, just puts it out there. Not a real pretty pass, but put it where Jackson can catch the ball and start running downfield. A little bit of a track meet there as Jackson was trying to find the sidelines and did. First down play, handoff to Jackson, straight up the middle. He's got short yardage, corralled early that time by Josh Williams, the junior linebacker, 5'10", 174 pounder for El Reno. And Santee Jackson picks up about two yards on the play. It'll be second down at eight. One thing about that uh, El Reno defense, they run a 4-4 scheme, four down linemen, four linebackers, all are very athletic. And if you're going to run a defense against this Carl Albert running attack, that 4-4 is about as good as you can find to match up with it. Hand off again to Jackson, and there's Mike Little grabbing him from behind. Short yardage again. It's a gain of maybe a yard and a half. They'll spot it at the 46, and it'll be third down and just a little less than seven yards to go. Same situation that we saw earlier. It is, and, and you know, Mike Little uh, is a guy that uh, you're going to hear his name a bunch. Tony's going to be saying Mike Little all afternoon. It is not the coach. This is Mike Little, the player. Uh, but Mike Little, the coach, would be proud to have this guy on his team. I can guarantee you. Third down, seven yards to go. Key play here in the opening drive for Carl Albert. Forge Ray sends a man in motion left. That's Hamlin. Pitch goes to Jackson, left side. Blitzy linebacker can't make the stop. Jackson turns the corner. He's got the first down at Moore as he's driven out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines for a report from Curtis Fitzpatrick. All right, Tony, you saw a couple plays ago. Josh Ritchie, number 22, the cornerback, was injured. It was just a matter of getting the breath knocked out of him. He says he's going to be back in. In fact, he was just back in on that last play, and he's going to be all right. Thank you, Curtis. Another first down, third first down of the drive for Carl Albert. Josh Ritchie back in on that last play, and he may still not have his uh, full lung capacity because uh, one of the reasons that play was successful, Ritchie got caught inside by a block, and that allowed Jackson to get outside and get the first down. Landon Cordray, the 5'10", 170-pound senior, is hit as he takes a snap. Somehow got the handoff off to Bazell, and Bazell crosses the 35 down to the 34-yard line. Little on the stop, but a quick hit on the handoff that time. Well, Little was messing things up uh, as he had Cordray around the ankles. Just a good play, and that's one key for this El Reno defense. If they're able to get penetration, they'll be all right. If at some point in time, Carl Albert's offensive front keeps them just at the line of scrimmage and tied up, that's when guys like Jackson and Bazell get a running head start and become really dangerous. Second down, eight yards to go, Cordray. Calling out the signal, again, Hamlet in motion to the left. Hand off to Jackson, he's got a hole inside the 30, carried tacklers near, first down yardage at the 26-yard line. Santee Jackson already his sixth carry on the drive. Well, good job by that offensive line. They opened up a nice hole for Jackson to slide through, and in fact, close enough that it looks like the officials may bring the chains out to determine if uh, they're going to move them again for Carl Albert. They stretch out the chains. And it's going to be a little bit short, about the length of the football short, so we'll have a third and less than a yard for the Carl Albert Titans. Their opening drive here in the first quarter, 4-16 remaining, no score. Trent Miller of El Reno, 59 yards to the one-inch line, and then fumbled the ball into the end zone. 
Yeah, and Trenton Miller was a big factor when these two teams played the first time. Not in the running game, but the passing game, although it's kind of tough to call them passes. Took a little flat pass, about 36 yards for a touchdown early in the ball game, and then a little Utah shovel pass that he went 74 yards on for a score. So uh, Miller has had success against uh, Carl Albert today. He gets off to a good start, just forgot, forgot his friend the football on the way in. Third down, short yardage play. You would expect Bazell maybe to get the call, and that's where the handoff goes. He spins free at the 20 to the 15. Johnny Bazell into the end zone, touchdown. Carl Albert takes the six to nothing lead. Well, Johnny Bazell scored on a run very similar to that in the first meeting between the Titans and the El Reno Indians. Just a bulldozing type run. Right there, he ran over a uh, linebacker at about the 15-yard line and just cruised on in. Doty will be the holder. Ryan Weaver, the kicker, 5'8", junior. The snap back in good shape, and the kick is up. And it's good. Timeout on the field, 4.04 to go. First quarter, Carl Albert, 7, and the El Reno Indians, nothing. Tulsa Technology Center has hundreds of ways to prepare you for success in the workplace and to make sure business has got the qualified workers they need. From the nationally recognized Transportation 2000 and Craftsmanship 2000 programs to state-of-the-art medical, aviation, and business and industry training, Tulsa Tech has been bringing business and education together for over 30 years. Tulsa Technology Center, preparing people for success. We at Mazio's know all about the pressures of the holidays. So to give you a break, we decided to simply play some relaxing holiday music and roll some nice product shots. Now forget this. Get a calzone ring plus 12 spicy wings for just $10.99 or try the triple option. Any three nine-inch pizzas, any toppings, any crust for just $13.33. But remember, no pressure. Mazio's, the pizza people crave. Welcome back. We'll take a look at the touchdown run, and there's Trent Miller who gets blocked, and then Bazell breaks the tackle that time and goes all the way into the end zone for the first score. Good job of getting Miller, the linebacker, on that side blocked, and then Weevil stuck his nose in there, and Josh Weevil, 5'11", 161, was no match for the 225-pound Bazell. Kick by Weaver, goes deep. Carter moves over. It's taken by Stuckey. He'll go to the far sideline, cut up field at the 25-30, has some running room. Only the kicker to beat. Now it's a foot race at the 35, and he's tripped out of bounds. A great kickoff return by Josh Stuckey. Uh, uh, Richie there, and he's the guy that, uh, that came out earlier, got the wind knocked out of him, but he set sail. And Tony, the most impressive thing about that you know, was not just his speed getting to the outside, but the way he got another five or six yards after he was tripped up trying to hold his balance. Looks like there they're going to mark him back up field just a little bit. At the 37, they say he went out of bounds, forced out of bounds there by Roberson. Josh Ritchie coming back, a 57-yard kickoff return, and El Reno starts in Carl Albert territory at the 37. Good blocking out in front. Carter with the block. He found the wedge and hit the opening and then just headed down the sidelines, and Roberson comes flying over to knock him out of bounds. We go back to the live play, and right around the right side, Childs into the game at tailback. He is forced out of bounds at about the 30-yard line, a pickup of seven on the play. So we see right away that Marshall Childs is going to uh, test that injured knee for El Reno. Well, a strained medial collateral ligament, certainly uh, that's an injury that, uh, depending on how quickly and how, how well you rehabilitate, you can get back. It's not a surgi uh, an injury. It has to be surgically repaired. Uh, the one thing, though, he is wearing the brace, and I can tell you any athlete I've ever talked to that has to wear that brace for the first time is uncomfortable. It takes a lot of getting used to, although that seven-yard pickup to the outside, pretty good start to, as far as the confidence for Marshall Childs. Golden Smith, the center for El Reno, having a little trouble with the shoulder pads, and the official tried to help him out 
with that. So we've got a momentary stoppage in play. Well, and Childs is very important. If they can cut him loose today and get him going against Carl Albert, he rushed 24 times for 200 yards in that win. Didn't score in the game. Miller did uh, most of the scoring as far as touchdowns for uh, El Reno in that ball game, but 200 yards, most of the offense provided by Marshall Child. One of the things we need to point out, the entire front for El Reno, all juniors. So this is a fairly young team. Oh, yes. They'll all be back next year. We will under center. Hands off to Childs, left side, runs into his own man, breaks two tackles, still on his feet inside the 20, down to the 17, and another first down, and that should erase the doubts. As you see, Childs <laughs> trying to get the El Reno fans fired up. Well, uh, Marshall Childs is an emotional player. You talked about the entire front being juniors, the entire front and their favorite ball carrier because Childs himself is a junior. He'll be back next year. So El Reno's looking at a chance, if they can win today, maybe to come up with back-to-back -back, uh, championships themselves. Taking another look at the run as he bounces off his own man and then starts bouncing off tacklers. Childs told us he was about 90% today, and that's a pretty good-looking 90% on that run. First and 10, pitch to Childs, going around the right side. He trips over the leg of his blocker. And that's Matt Taylor, who was out in front trying to block, and Childs just clipped the ankle of Taylor, and he'll lose about two yards on the play. This is a play that once they look at this in the film room at El Reno, uh, that Marshall Childs will benefit from. He'll learn you've got to have vision as a running back. You may have a hole that you're supposed to go to or a place you're supposed to go to, but you've got to be looking for openings. Emmett Smith of the Dallas Cowboys very good at that. Childs had plenty of room to cut it back to the inside, kept following his blocker, and eventually tripped over his blocker when he could have had a big run. Second down, 12 yards to go. Two receivers to the right for El Reno. Back to pass, Weevil. Rolls left, looks toward the end zone, and the pass underthrown, and it is intercepted. Pass picked off by Chad Stuckey at the two-yard line, and another big turnover for the El Reno Indians and Johnny on the spot. There's Chad Stuckey. He stripped the football on the run by Miller, and now he gets the interception. Chad Stuckey playing a big role in this ball game, no doubt, and that was a, that was a pass that really you didn't think anybody was gonna have a chance to catch, but just like you didn't think anybody was gonna catch Trent Miller, Stuckey went ahead and dove for it, and the officials ruled he was able to get his arms under it and get, uh, get the ball back for Carl Albert. Right now, this game's starting to remind you a little bit of a 6A championship played last night where one team got opportunity after opportunity, Tulsa Union last night in Tulsa, and didn't come up with, uh, with anything to show for it. Here we see the replay. Weevil rolling out, comes back with the pass, and look at Stuckey's effort. He dives and gets down there and does indeed get the ball inside uh, the arms and uh, uh, up above the arms. First down and 10, a run up the middle, a gain of about two yards. It'll be second down and eight for Carl Albert. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Titans lead the El Reno Indians seven to nothing. Bobble of the snap, it looked like by Cordray, and that broke up the timing of the play to pitch to Jackson in the end zone. Jackson may, manages to get out to about the two, but it looked like Cordray uh, bobbled the snap. Well, it looked like Cordray bobbled the snap, and Jackson saw it and stopped. So it ended up being a very awkward pitch out uh, from uh, Cordray to Jackson and allowed all the blue shirts to get back in there, and Jackson really had to work to make sure he didn't get caught in the end zone for a safety. Ball back at the three-yard line. It'll be third down and about nine yards to go. Huge series here for this uh, El Reno defense. If they can, uh, they can force Carl Albert to punt it out of their own end zone, they'll be right back at square one, have a chance to tie the ball game up. Bordre hands it off to Jackson across the five up to about the seven-yard line. Hanging on that time for El Reno. Lance rushing, defensive end, 6'1", 185-pound junior, a pickup on the play of about four yards, and it'll be fourth down and five, and that will bring in David Houtland to punt for Carl Albert. We've seen evidence of it so far, Tony. Both these coaches, uh, Rocky Carter and Gary Rose, they're actually good friends, and they're a lot alike. I mean, these are guys that pay attention to detail, and that includes special teams, and so far, we've already seen some big plays in the special teams area. This could be another. Ryan Weaver back to punt. The kick 
a spiraling kick, not that deep. It hits at about the 33, takes it El Reno bounce, and is down at the 31-yard line. So once again, for the second straight time, El Reno with outstanding field position with 37 seconds left to go in this opening quarter. What their offense needs to do is they need to wipe out the last two mistakes out of their mind. You don't want to get snake bit in a championship game and be the team that everybody says, oh, they looked really good, but they just didn't win the ball game. Indians break the huddle with two wide receivers to the left, D'Angelo Hayes and Josh Ritchie, and Childs is the tailback in the offset eye. We will hands instead to Miller. He is stood up at the 30-yard line and gang tackled by a host of Titans. Joe Mendoza, the nose tackle in there, along with a bunch of his teammates, and it is second down and 10, and let's go down to the sidelines at Curtis Fitzpatrick. All right, Tony, you know, we've seen the, uh, the turnovers from El Reno in this half, deep inside Carl Albert territory. They're not lacking confidence. They've been on the sideline for El Reno. They're not pointing fingers. They're saying we're going to get it back, and they've got the ball back, and their offense has had success today. Be a second down and 10 when El Reno runs their next play because that's the end of the first quarter. And Carl Albert with the lead in this 5A state championship game. Carl Albert Titan 7, El Reno Indians nothing. We'll be back with second quarter action in the Class 5A state championship contest. At the Tulsa Auto Collection, you can save both time and money on the very latest SUVs from Ford and Lincoln Mercury. Get low, hassle-free prices on a huge selection of new Ford Explorers, Expeditions, and Excursions, Mercury Mountaineers, and Lincoln Navigators. In fact, we have 14 four-door XLS Explorers, each priced at only $23,247. You save over $2,800. The 2,000 models are here, so hurry and save both time and money at the Tulsa Auto Collection. sales to show your colors for the Oklahoma Sooners and shop a selection of OU merchandise unmatched in Oklahoma. Whether your needs range from OU sweats to t-shirts or jerseys, hats, jackets, or shirts like the coaches wear, Big Red is your supplier of Sooners sportswear and gift items. You can shop campus stores and specialty shops across the nation, but you will never see the selection like you've got at Big Red in Tulsa. Big Red sales, 44th and Memorial next to Cowboy Pete's Van Emporium, where crimson and cream always rise to the top. Welcome back to Lewis Field in Stillwater. Tony Sellers and Robert Allen as we get ready to start the second quarter. Carl Albert leads El Reno 7 to nothing. El Reno with the football in Carl Albert territory for the third straight time. El Reno has been in Carl Albert territory every time they've had the ball, but two turnovers have prevented the Indians from getting on the scoreboard. Man in motion to the left, eye backfield, the handoff to Childs. And he'll have about four yards to the 26 to set up a third down and five. And they gave, they gave Trent Miller one yard on that first carry on first down just before the end of the quarter. But uh, very impressive, or at least I'm very impressed with Marshall Childs. He has come back looking like uh, he was never injured. He has a lot of confidence, it seems like, in that knee and his abilities. You know, one thing we have not mentioned so far Tony, this is really, I, I want to say it's cute, but it's not cute for the opposing team. Mike Dunn, Joe Carey, and Joe Mendoza, the three guys that typically man that inside of the defensive front for Carl Albert are 5'4", 5 5'3", 5 and 5'3". That's, uh, you know, people talk about having smurf receivers. Carl Albert's got smurf defensive tackles. Well, you can see Mendoza right there at nose tackle kind of in between and, and you can't tell if he's standing up or he's already down in position <laughs> a great kid though third down and five handoff to miller it doesn't fool anybody the carl albert defense all over it ryan kirk made the initial hit and it'll be fourth down and still about three yards to go for at el reno first down as they spotted the 24 yard line and when you talk about that defensive front and having guys that are very small up there, the advantage is coaches are always telling you the guy that gets lowest is the guy that's going to win the battle in the trenches. They don't really have to work at getting low. A.J. Hamlin's going to attempt a 40-yard field goal. The snap is high. They get it down. The kick is long enough, and it is good. 
A 40-yard field goal by Hamlin and an unbelievable job by Zach Birdsong, the holder, to bring that one down and give A.J. Haglund a chance to kick it. You know, a week ago in the uh, semifinal against uh, McAllister, he came on and hit a 41-yard field goal. And he's a good kicker, but not, not, not a guy that Division I schools are flocking to. He made that 41-yard field goal by about 41 yards and one inch. Came back later in that game and hit a 50-yarder. Today, hits this 40-yarder to get it started. He is getting a lot of confidence and looking a lot better with that kicking stroke. And if you look at the catch by Birdsong, he came up out of the stance, and most players in that position would probably have panicked, rolled out, tried to throw the football, but he had the presence of mind to go back down to a knee, set it up. Haglund saw what was happening, didn't start his approach, and stayed in rhythm and made a great kick. You're right. The key to that is, is those two guys reading each other and Haglund not starting his approach too soon or stopping in the middle of it. It was very smooth, even though it was a poor snap. Ten minutes, 45 seconds to go in the first half. It's Carl Albert 7, El Reno 3, and that's got to give El Reno a little confidence to get some points on the board after they had moved the football. It depends on your mindset. If you're on the sidelines right now, you're either thinking, you know, we could be up in this ball game 17 to 7, or you're saying, hey, 7 to 3, we're okay. Haglund to kick it off. It's a short kickoff. A fair catch is called and taken at about the 27-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 26. Marcus Clayton making the fair catch call for Carl Albert. Let's go to the sidelines and Curtis Fitzpatrick. All right, Tony, before the game, the kickers were having all kinds of problems setting their feet in the kicking game, trying to get the field goals and the kickoffs when they were practicing. They couldn't keep their feet, but the field has dried considerably. And on the last field goal by Haglin, you saw he had no problem getting the ball away. And uh, as far as the weather go, we're looking at about a three-hour window from the rains. You won't see any rain coming to Stillwater area until about 6 o'clock tonight. All right, Curtis, thank you. First and 10, the handoff up the middle. There goes Bazell. The runaway truck again across the 35, just shy of a first down, a pickup of about nine and a half yards. Well, one thing, too, I was going to mention that kickoff. That has become the trademark kickoff for El Reno, just a little short pooch kickoff. Last week, McAllister fumbled two of those, giving uh, El Reno great opportunity and great field position. I noticed that uh, Gary Rose has done his homework, and he's got those up men saying, look, we'll take that field position, just wave, catch it, put it down, we'll take a fair catch and start it with our offense out there. That comes from watching film and working during the week. Four plays, 25 yards, and the 40-yard field goal by Haglund, the scoring drive for El Reno. Cordray under center, a quick snap. I think the center, when Cordray reached up to flip the towel up, thought that he was tapping him to snap the ball. He snapped it early, and there are flags down on the field. They Busted play all the way around, and we'll look for the signal from the officials. And I don't know if they'll do this all that often, but Carl Albert does often work on a silent camp. Ball start on the offense. Well, they call illegal procedure on the Titans, and that'll push it back and make it second down at a little more than five yards to go. But the center wearing the towel so the quarterback can dry his hands, and I think Cordray flipped it up and tapped the center and thought they were going on the quick count and got everybody confused. Hand off up the middle, Bazell. He is close to first down yardage, just rolling along, carrying his own players yeah. and carrying El Reno players with it. No problem with that five-yard penalty. Just give it to big number 40, and he'll make up for that penalty and get you that much more for the first down. This summer, he worked out, at, I know, at the Adams course because I would see him up there every once in a while. He won every conditioning and weightlifting award that you could win in their summer program. Like I'm talking about, this is a very strong, uh, just as physically fit as you can get, 6'1", 225-pounder. First down it is, just across the 36-yard line for the Carl Albert Titans. Wing back in the slot. Now he comes in motion to the near side. Hand off to Bazell. He's across the 40. A pickup of about four and a half more yards as they continue to grind it out. That's carry number eight for Johnny Bazell in the first half. Santee Jackson already with eight carries. 16 of the 17 plays run by Carl Albert on the ground as we expected. When uh, we said at the beginning of the ball game today, folks, 
you don't have to invest too much time on this one. This will be one of the quicker football games you'll ever have a chance to watch. Both coaches like to keep that clock moving and that ball on the ground. Well, that three-hour window we got should be plenty of time. In motion to the right, the tight end. Now the handoff to Jackson. Across the left side up to about the 45-yard line, a couple of yards short of the first down. Mike Little in on the tackle for El Reno. And also Matt Taylor, the defensive tackles on the interior for the Indians. It'll be third down and a little more than two yards to go as the ball is spotted at the 44-yard line. Good zone blocking by that front, uh, that Carl Albert front. Now, they'll run the counter play, too. That's also one of their favorites. Play we've already seen out of the El Reno Indians. And they'll do a little pulling, but they love to just fire straight ahead. And again, motion by Carl Albert before the snap. That's going to cost him another five yards. Bazell moved, and also the outside receive, receiver moving early. Uh, you just can't fire off early. But they do like to fire off straight ahead and give that opportunity to Jackson Bazell. Dead ball. False start on the offense. These are penalties, too, that I can tell you, knowing Gary Rose well, he is frustrated. Doesn't like to see his team play sloppy. Doesn't like uh, mistakes, uh, you know, just like this. These are very preventable penalties. You just have to concentrate and be ready. And you see, so far, it's Carl Albert that's had the yellow hankies, uh, three of those, for 15 yards. I think all three have been illegal procedures. All three illegal procedures. The first two didn't phase them. They went ahead and got the first down. Let's see if it happens here. Hand off to Bazell up the middle, first down near midfield. It looked like that play was going to be stopped short of the first down, and Bazell would not be denied. In on the tackle, D'Angelo Hayes, but not before Bazell moves the chains with a run to the 49-yard line. That front in front of him, by the way, includes Jimmy Winters, Nathan Guerrero, Matt Hitton, Will Trent, uh, Mike Mitchell, or they're Matt Mitchell. You can see they're doing their job. He got through a hole cleanly, and then it was number 21, uh, D'Angelo Hayes, in the secondary that was having to make the tackle. That's not good for El Reno. Hand off to Jackson inside of the 45. Again, Hayes, the cornerback, has to make the tackle and a pickup of about six more yards for the Titans as they continue to work the right side of their line, the left side of that El Reno defensive line. Well, at some point in time, uh, looking at it, Rocky Carter is going to have to have a talk with his defensive front and his linebackers. That is a mismatch, whether it's uh, Santee Jackson or especially if it's Johnny Bazell that's getting through those first two lines of defense into that secondary. You can't have that. The Indians can't. And off again to Jackson. Cuts to the outside. Has the first down inside the 40 down to the 37-yard line. Again, it's the defensive secondary having to make the stop. For El Reno, Kyle Whitney, one of the linebackers in on the tackle along with Marshall Childs, another first down. That is first down number seven of the first half for Carl Albert. May not be the most exciting football you'll find, but it is Carl Albert Titan football. This is the way they have gone about winning two state championships in a row. You see the play here, the give to Jackson. Gets through that first line of defense. Good block on the front, and then he's being tackled by... Uh, linebackers and secondary players that tells you Carl Albert's doing a great job across the front with those uh, El Reno defensive linemen Jackson again having some problems with the strap on the shoulder pad so he'll have to come out of the game on first and ten at the 37 the thing he did well there is before he got to the line of scrimmage he saw that the defender was being blocked into the backfield he took a little stutter step cut inside of him and found the opening First and 10 at the 37. Look at Bazell, less than a yard behind the quarterback, gets a handoff, big hole, 30, 25, and down to about the 23 is Johnny Bazell. Looked like he was doing the low hurdles on that run. Well, I was going to say, besides being a sprinter, now he thinks he's a hurdler, and he has done that at times. I've seen him hurdle over some players. Good, uh, good strong run here, and you watch that front. Gets the hole. Now he's got a head of steam. Tries to hurdle, and that was uh, number 11, A.J. Haglin, that he tried to hurdle, and Haglin was just able to get him around the ankles and pull him down. But watch this Carl Albert offensive line. They are doing a job on that front four or front five for El Reno right now. Haglin, slightly injured, had to come out of the game after that play at 141 pounds, taking on the 225-pound Bazell. This time, Bazell is bottled up 
after about a two yard game. Mike Little had him from behind and it'll be second down and about eight yards to go for the Titans. Clock continuing to roll. We're approaching the midway point of the second half. Carl Albert leads El Reno 7-3 in this Class 5A championship game. Talking about that Carl Albert offensive line that's done a terrific job uh, on this drive. They're not all that big. 240, 209, just 190 at center, 215 and 240. Not that big, but boy, they're doing the, doing the job. Jackson back in the game, gets the pitch. He's hauled down from behind at the 21-yard line. The ball is loose. No signal yet that the play was dead. They are now finally, I believe. They're still fighting They're for looking it. for the ball. And the official's not signaling that it was down. It looked like that the ground caused that fumble. And now we have a flag down as the official's trying to find out what the flag is about. They say that El Reno has come up with the football. I did not see a flag on the play, and we'll take another look at it on the replay. Jackson comes around and a great defensive play by Marshall Childs. The ball comes loose. And you can see a host of El Reno players on the pile. When it looked like the ball, the ground didn't actually cause the fumble. He was going down. I'm not so sure that hitting the ground didn't cause the fumble because he hit with his back first, and then the ball slid out. There was a flag thrown into that pileup as they were scrambling for the football. But they did pick the flag up, and now it's El Reno's football, first and ten. At their own 20-yard line, a big break for them. The game for Carl Albert and Childs in their tailback made the big play defensively. He'll get the handoff new quarterback in the game as Weevil had to leave, had an equipment problem for one play. He came out of the game and he'll come right back in. Zach Birdsong had to come in and take the snap on that play. Birdsong will come out now and Weevil back into the game. Pick up on the play that time by Childs from the 20 up to the 25. Five yard gain. Childs now with five carries for 27 yards here in the first half. Little G action as they pull the guard on that play. Mike Little was out blocking in front of Childs for that five yard pickup. Second down, five yards to go. Pitch back to Childs, cuts inside one block, gets up near the 30 yard line, and then he is forced back. Stephen Belvin. I know a guy that you like came up to knock him sideways to keep him from crossing that first yard, first down mark. Uh, Gary Rose told me that in the early part of the season, it was not his offense he was frustrated with. Felt like his defense was costing him ball games, so he put in an infusion of some new players. One of those was a sophomore, Steve Belvin, uh, just a 5'7", 195-pound linebacker. All he has done is go on and rack up 117 tackles and has really become the ringleader on that Carl Albert defense, number 38, the middle linebacker. Less than a yard to go on third down. They hand it to Childs. He has the first down easily over the left side up to about the 32-yard line. Six first down of the half for El Reno. Well, we've only seen three passes thrown in this game. Two of them completed, one to the right side and one to the wrong side. And that's why coaches say when you throw the football, two out of three things that can happen aren't good. Yeah, but you've got to practice throwing the football in order to be able to do it well. And I don't think these two teams do a whole lot of that. I think they practice those handoffs all day long. Clock running, four and a half minutes and counting left to go in the half. First down and 10, El Reno at their own 32. Hand off to Carter, who's back in there at tailback, tries to slide to the outside, and Fata Carter picks up about three yards on the play. Yeah, I think it's, it, there's no doubt about it, Tony, that Childs so far has shown he can handle the tailback chores today. Well, if that becomes the case, and you're able to keep Childs in there down after down at tailback, I got a good idea of what you can do with Fata Carter. Put him on one side, put Richie on the other, and that gives you two really big time threats as far as reverses, uh, which El Reno will run from time to time, and also those short passing game, which we saw early, long, early on in the first series with the completion of Richie. Carter played most of the year at wide receiver, had 12 catches for 160 yards. Second down, about seven, counter play to Carter. He is hit at the line of scrimmage and forced back in there quickly with the initial hit is Mike Dunn, a 5'6", 250-pound sophomore, the biggest player on this Carl Albert team in terms of weight, but just like a lot of his teammates, he's very short, and there's a flag down on the play. 
Yeah, well, there's a flag down the play. You also foul. can probably hear the official. Well, it's going to be third down right here. It's going to be third down right here. You guys want that 15 yards, right? Yeah. Got a dead ball, a sportsman light on the offense. I think that was called on Fata Carter for the way he delivered the football back to the referee after the play was over. He just kind of slammed it on the ground, frustrated that he didn't get the, uh, the yards he needed. 7-3, Carl Albert leads El Reno. We'll take a timeout and be back with more of the 5A state championship game right after this. Galaxy has some great holiday ideas. Thanks to Galaxy, you'll never find a better time to save on pool table, foosball tape, pinball machine, video game, shoot box, game table, slot machine, bar stool, spa, and tanning bed. Galaxy is your holiday headquarters, and that means you save on everything in the store and your game room designer. Everything it takes to turn your very own home into a family funhouse is on sale during Galaxy's holiday clearance event. Galaxy Distributing on Admiral near I-244 and Memorial. At First National Bank and Trust, we got things rolling right after the turn of the century. And through the years, we've put a different spin on banking by staying true to our heritage and the people we serve. Now, when you visit our new quarters at 2100 North Aspen, you could win something as solid as banking with us during the next century. This 1999 American Eagle Collector Set, the last coins to be minted this millennium. Stop by today. First National Bank and Trust, right on the money, right where you live. Tony Sellers and Robert Allen back with you at Lewis Field in Stillwater. Three minutes, 27 seconds left to go in the first half. And it's uh, going to be a third down and about 20 yards to go for El Reno after the 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Single back in the backfield is Childs. Back to pass. We will throws it high down the near sideline. In and out of the hands of Richie at about the 48. He was open, but he could not come up with it. Michael Roberson on the coverage for Carl Albert, and it will be a punting situation for the first time today for El Reno. Well, and there was a lot of sparring going on on that play. All the way down the sideline uh, as Richie, the wide receiver for, uh, for El Reno, and also Roberson on the coverage, uh, had their hands all over each other. In that case, I think the official probably made the right decision. Both guys were, were punching and, and grabbing. Don't call it. A.J. Hagland, also the punter for El Reno, a low kick. It hits at about the 45, bounces toward the sideline, is picked up as it goes out of bounds by Jeff Doty, and Carl Albert will have the football at their own 39-yard line. So uh, it winds up being about a 38-yard kick, no return. Yeah, and it was going out of bounds. Uh, I kind of question Doty even getting anywhere near that. If, uh, if I were a coach, I'd instruct him, hey, Unless you're going to field it early on and try and get the return. When the blue shirts get around you, don't pick it up. Just wanted to get in the stat column. <laughs> One yard punt return is what that would go down. First and 10, Carl Albert. They lead it 7 to 3. Ball at their own 39 yard line. Cordray sends a man in motion to the right. He hands off to Jackson. The second man through has a big hole. And now there's nobody in front of him. Can he be caught? He's at the five, touchdown, Carl Albert. 61-yard touchdown for Santee Jackson, and it's 13-3. to three. Uh, One thing I was going to point out very early on in the play, you talk about in the I formation having that tailback seven yards deep. Carl Albert hasn't been doing that. They've got the fullback, Bazell, about a yard behind the quarterback, Cordray, and then Jackson just another yard behind him. Really a tight eye formation. Bazell had a big block. That front, uh, that Carl Albert front did a good job. And 61 yards later, they're up 14 to 3. Kick up and good by Weaver. Time out of the field with 3.01 to go in the first half. It's Carl Albert 14 and the El Reno Indians 3. SUVs have finally arrived. At the Tulsa Auto Collection, you can save both time and money on the very latest SUVs from Ford and Lincoln Mercury. Get low, hassle-free prices on a huge selection of new Ford Explorers, Expeditions and Excursions, Mercury Mountaineers, and Lincoln Navigators. 
In fact, we have 14 four-door XLS Explorers, each priced at only $23,247. You save over $2,800. The 2,000 models are here, so hurry and save both time and money at the Tulsa Auto Collection. like Dad's putting the fourth generation to work, too. Remember, you'll pay only our factory direct price. Come see us in Tulsa Bixby, Springdale, Nixa, and Joplin. 14 to 3, Carl Albert, and Robert, one of your keys, who gets to 200 yards first? The Carl Albert Titans are awfully close. Well, that 61 gets them in the other, in the 190 neighborhood. Big play there, though, and Santee Jackson, once he got in the clear, that was D'Angelo uh, Hayes that almost had a shot at him. It's got a lot of speed, but Santee Jackson's got a lot of speed, and boy, what crisp blocking up front. I mean, everybody got a shoulder on somebody, slammed into him, and opened it wide up for uh, Santee Jackson. Coach's dream, one play, 61-yard scoring drive, took him eight seconds, and right now, Santee Jackson, unofficially 11, carries 121 yards. Johnny Bazell, 11 for 74, so Carl Albert again, right at that 195-yard mark rushing. Well, nothing could be sweeter if you're Carl Albert, not only to win another state championship, if they can go on and do that, but also put both players in your backfield, your fullback and your tailback, over 100 yards rushing. Josh Ritchie jumping up and down. He had a 56-yard kickoff return earlier. This time, it's a squib kick by Weaver, picked up by one of the up men. That's Hagelin. Oh. He's got a big hole at the 40, 45, 50, tripped up. And it was the kicker, Weaver, that saved the touchdown by tripping up A.J. Hagler. Well, uh, judging by the way Weaver was coming off the field, that may be the first time he's made a tackle this season. Didn't look like he was real comfortable doing it, but made a nice saving tackle as Hagler. It was really one of those weird plays on that short kickoff, which both these teams like to use. Watch the hole open up in front of him. It's just that here comes the coverage. It's wide open. He heads off, and the kicker gets over there and just gets his shoulder into him. And I can tell you, Weaver walked a little crooked coming off the field after making the tackle. Well, once again, El Reno will start a drive in Carl Albert territory at the 49, 2.53 left. We will throws it into the chest of one of the defensive linemen. I think that was Josh Hamlin. It hit him right between well, the two of the six. It had to be a defensive end because I can't see him throwing it low enough to hit one of the defensive tackles. Second down and 10. That stops the clock with 2.50. El Reno, I believe, has all three timeouts remaining. So plenty of time to try to get something else on the board here before halftime. And if you're if you're Rocky Carter right now, you're thinking you've got to get on the board. And I'm not talking a field goal. You need to get a touchdown. Otherwise, Carl Albert has the ability to control the clock the second half and run out another state championship. Handoff up the middle to Childs. Big hole, 35-30. Spun down inside the 25-yard line. Chad Stuckey saves the touchdown. They had three wide receivers left, only one back in the backfield, and they went right up the middle for 27 with Marshall Childs. I, I am loving Marshall Childs. I mean, if this is what uh, it's like to have a strained MCL, I know a lot of guys would like to have one. He is looking really good, even wearing the brace, and you can see that one knee where it's a little puffed up. The uh, pants are a little wider there is the one he's got the brace on, his, uh, his left one. He is looking good. First and 10 at the 23, handoff to Childs, bounces to the outside, but this time, no running room, still on his feet down to the 20, making the tackle. Charlie Fleming was in there for Carl Albert, the outside linebacker. He made the first contact, and they're gonna spot it just inside the 20 at about the 19 and a half, a pickup of a little more than three yards on the play for Marshall Childs. Tony, one thing that, that you are seeing here that will tell you both these teams have good athletes and that they're very athletic is the fact they cannot run outside. Here's Marshall Childs trying to break one outside. They are getting their yards, running it up the middle. Second down and seven, ball just inside the 20 yard line in Carl Albert territory. Wywell to the near side, in and out of the hands of Fata Carter at about the 14-yard line. That pass was right on target. 
but Carter, I think, was trying to turn up field before he had the ball, and the ball went right through his hand. Yeah, or he may, he, you know, he may be going back to the huddle saying, you know, I haven't had practice doing that. Last couple of weeks, I've been taking handoffs, not catching the football, but uh, Fata Carter, a terrific athlete, and that's one that uh, he'd love to have back. But uh, I, I love him and the things that he can do for you. Uh, he will be a college football player and could play either side of the ball at about three or four different positions before it's all over. Third big down play. and seven, big play for El Reno. Hand off to Childs. He stopped at about the 16, so it's going to be fourth down and three, but a situation right here. They have a field goal on the board. Do you go for another field goal, or do you try to go for it here on fourth down and about three? And we've got a player down for El Reno, and that's going to be Marshall Childs. He is down at about the 17-yard line. Well, and you hate to see that. Uh, again, he was in traffic there when he got hit, a pickup of about four yards on that particular carry. And you just hate to see this because this kid, after missing the last couple of weeks, has come in today in a state championship game after a few weeks of inactivity and looked like, uh, looked like he's looked all season long. Nine carries, 65 yards. Well, Marshall Childs is getting up and he's walking gingerly. We'll check on his condition when we return here at the 5A state championship. From contemporary oak wall units to hand-carved French country slayer spindle beds, Great Southern Bedrooms has an oak bedroom set for you. Or if the style and convenience of a futon sofa bed is what you need, we have the best quality hardwood frames and Sealy mattresses available. With a futon, you can change your second bedroom into a home office and still have a comfy bed when company visits. Great Southern Bedrooms, open every day at 51st Place in Sheridan. Great Southern Bedrooms, where fashion is in comfort. So much violence. What's happening with these kids today? I'm afraid to go to school. Something's got to change. Don't any of these kids believe in God anymore? Yes, I believe in God. A new generation of students is emerging. Thousands of teenagers in the greater Tulsa area ready to raise the standard. A new light shining. Introducing new hope. You have a voice. Yes, I believe in God. Raise the standard this fall at 180. 180. Wednesday nights. Call 234-8180 for more information. 234-8180. Raise the standard. Encouraging the El Reno faithful to get excited. It is fourth down and three for the Indians. A minute 23 to go, and no, they have decided now to go with A.J. Hagland, Robert, and I think a, a good move because they need to get some points on the board. This puts you a touchdown and a two-point conversion down. This will be a 33-yard effort. He hit earlier from 40. Birdsong the holder. High snap again. Hagland gets it up, and it is good. So once again, Birdsong and Haglund coordinate things after a shaky snap. Well, you know, I'm starting to think that that's just the way they do it. I mean, it's so smooth and they've got it down so well, I think they realize, hey, you know the snap's going to be high. It's kind of a flaw they've got in their deep snapper, but they're able to handle it. Last week, I watched his, uh, two team, or watched El Reno in the semifinal, and they had one, ha uh, one high snap last week. Time to check in now on the sideline with Curtis Fitzpatrick. All right, Tony Marshall Child says he got his knee rolled under by a defender. He bruised it a little bit. It was the right knee that's been bruised here in the last couple of weeks. He's wearing a brace on it. He says he will be back, though. Looked like he was ready to turn around and come right back in there. And uh, Marshall Child certainly will be a key in this football game in the second half. 117 to go. It's now Carl Albert 14 and El Reno 6. Well, had El Reno decide to go for it, I'm not so sure if they had called timeout, that they could not have put Childs right back out on the field because Carl Albert called the timeout. He still has to sit a play. A.J. Hagland will kick it off. We saw the short onside the last time. Hagland approaches again. It's the pooch kick. Clayton again will call for the fair catch at the 32-yard line, and that time you've got Marcus Clayton a veteran, a wide receiver. He had a little bit of running room in front of him. I wonder if Gary Rosa said, hey, let's not take any chances. If they do that, just take the fair catch and really hasn't given them an option on that. Yeah, and what it does and, and what it did last week to McAllister in turning the ball over twice, it kind of makes a kickoff return more like a punt return. The coverage gets to you that much quicker. You don't have much time to make an adjustment. 
and Gary Rose so far has shown that he'd rather just take the nice field position that comes from a short kick rather than risking a return on those. Carl Albert with two timeouts remaining and a minute 16 to go in the first half. They will keep it on the ground to Bazell. He's across the 35 to the 36 yard line, a pickup of three for Johnny Bazell and the clock will continue to roll El Reno with their timeouts, not choosing to try to stock the clock. And at this point, Carl Albert content with that 14 to six lead as well. Of course, if uh, they happen to break one of these running plays for 20 or 30 yards, well, that might change their thinking. This is Carl Albert's two minute offense. <laughs> it's their regular offense, but it's also their two minute offense. Second down and about seven yards to go. Cordray this time hands off to Jackson, sheds one tackler, gets up to the 34-yard line where it'll be third down and just a little over three, but they may not run another play. Down to 30 seconds on the clock. And well, they haven't reset the uh, play clock yet, so yeah, they're to the point now where they can just watch it run out if they choose to. Inside of 20 seconds to go, Carl Albert in the huddle and Cordray over near the sideline to see if they want to send in a play, and I don't think they're going to. So we've had an entertaining first half. Most of the action on the ground. And the fans getting their money's worth here at a rain-soaked Lewis Field at halftime of the Class 5A state championship. It's Carl Albert, 14, El Reno, 6. And we'll be back with our halftime activities here from Stillwater. The 2000 SUVs have finally arrived. At the Tulsa Auto Collection, you can save both time and money on the very latest SUVs from Ford and Lincoln Mercury. Get low, hassle-free prices on a huge selection of new Ford Explorers, Expeditions and Excursions, Mercury Mountaineers, and Lincoln Navigators. In fact, we have 14 four-door XLS Explorers, each priced at only $23,247. You save over $2,800. The 2000 models are here, so hurry and save both time and money at the Tulsa Auto Collection. This is living in Oklahoma. Your style. Home price. Mathis Brothers Furniture. Whether you're watching holiday football games or just relaxing by the fire, do it in a reclining chair made by Lazy Boy. Purchase a Lazy Boy from Mathis Brothers starting at just $1.99 and receive this beanie-sized raccoon absolutely free. This chase model is only $2.98. It's genuine Lazy Boy and you still get the free gift. Mathis Brothers Furniture. We're back here at the Class 5A Championship. El Reno coach Rocky Carter. Rocky, your team's moving the ball. Turnovers have killed you. How frustrating has it been? Well, you know, you just can't do this against a great team like Carl Albert. we got to come out, and when you get down there, you got to score and get an end zone, you're going to be in trouble. How do you shut down their running game? Well, you know, we're just going to have to stay with it and do what we do best and, and, you know, just get a little tougher in the trenches. But, you know, we're doing a little bit better job. We've stopped them a little bit. But the big thing is we we got to take care of our own business on offense and quit fumbling that football. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. All right, that's Rocky Carter. Back up to you, Tony. Thanks a lot, Curtis Fitzpatrick. And uh, if you're Rocky Carter, yeah, you're a little frustrated. Your team got off to a great start moving the ball. You lose a touchdown right at the goal line. Uh, you're right back on the doorstep. You throw an interception. And I think you look at the score now and you say, 
gosh, what if we could be ahead in this ball game? Yeah, that's the danger of, of having plays like that, success where you get get down on the other end of the field on the verge of scoring, and you can't get any closer than what Trent Miller did right off the start in the ball game. And you start, you know, you start thinking on your sidelines, what ifs, what ifs, and you've got to get those what ifs. That's really the big thing Rocky Carter's got to do psychologically with his team here at halftime. Say, guys, forget about the mistakes, forget about what could have been. We got to deal with the reality, and the reality right now is we're down 14 to six. We're down eight points to the two-time defending state champion. You got to get your heads picked up, go out and play some football. I thought he made, you know, even though it was very simple, made some good comments. They got to get tougher in the trenches. I mean, we've seen Mike Little, but uh, Mike Little, who's on that front uh, front defensive line for El Reno, has got to get Matt Taylor and rushing and Fada Carter and those linebackers uh, to come up and give him some help. Otherwise. You're going to see D'Angelo Hayes and Josh Wewell and uh, some of those other guys in the secondary, A.J. Haglund, making tackles on guys like Johnny Bazell. Second half, if that continues to happen, I can tell you where the gold ball's going. Well, you look at the uh, statistics, and we'll take a look at them a little bit later on. They're, they're virtually even. Turnovers have been the difference in this game, and I think if you look at it in the second half, you're in your locker room saying, guys, Whoever keeps the football, doesn't give it away, is going to walk out of here with the state championship. I, I think you're right. And the thing is, uh, it'll be very important because uh, El Reno received the opening kickoff. Uh, Carl Albert won the toss and deferred. Carl Albert's going to get a chance to get their hands on the football first in the second half. And that may be the most important possession of the entire game. So, folks, if you're going to the bathroom, if you're going to the refrigerator, you're going to make a sandwich, make sure you make that sandwich in time that you get back for the start of the second half. The game very well could be decided on that possession. Entertaining contest, all we thought it would be. The Class 5A state championship. We'll come back with highlights, statistics, and interviews here at halftime at Lewis Field. The 2,000 trucks have finally arrived. At the Tulsa Auto Collection, you can save both time and money on the very latest trucks from Ford. Check out the new Ford F-Series pickups from the largest truck selection in Oklahoma. Save on a new 2,000 F-150 XL. It's priced at a hassle-free $14,493. Save on 2,000 model Ford Rangers, all with $1,000 factory rebates and low hassle-free prices. The 2,000 models are here. So hurry and save both time and money at the Tulsa Auto Collection. Ah, the holidays. They don't have to be like this. Try DiscoverTulsa.com instead. Shop hundreds of brand names for thousands of gifts from DiscoverTulsa.com and around the world. And never even leave your driveway. Happy holidays from DiscoverTulsa.com. From contemporary oak wall units to hand-carved French country slayer spindle beds, Great Southern Bedrooms has an oak bedroom set for you. Or if the style and convenience of a futon sofa bed is what you need, we have the best quality hardwood frames and Sealy mattresses available. With a futon, you can change your second bedroom into a home office and still have a comfy bed when company visits. Great Southern Bedrooms, open every day at 51st Place in Sheridan. Great Southern Bedrooms, where fashion is in comfort. Rice, only a good energy food for the active athlete. No, it's also the best initial treatment for sprained joints. Are we advocating putting rice on a sprained ankle? Not exactly. You see, rice is a memory word for rest, ice, compression, and elevation, the best beginning treatment for injured joints. Apply compression carefully. Remember, a wrinkled or too tight ace wrap can act like a tourniquet. Then elevate and rest the extremity and pack it in ice. When in doubt, with any extremity injury, remember, ice is nice. time of the Class 5A state championship game. Midwest City Carl Albert leads it 14 to 6 over El Rito. And with me right now, the executive director of the Oklahoma Secondary Schools Activities Association, Danny Reynolds. This has been, despite the weather, a fantastic weekend for football in the state of Oklahoma. Last night in Tulsa, a record crowd, over 40,000 at Skelly Stadium to see Jinx and Tulsa Union, despite the thunder, the rain, 
the wind, everything else. Uh, you just have to be pleased at what's going on with high school football this weekend. It really has been a fantastic weekend already, Tony. And of course, this game is typifies what we've had going on. Last night at Tulsa was an unbelievable situation with the crowd and the atmosphere. Uh, both teams and both crowds uh, played the game the way it's supposed to be played. Certainly had a great contest there, as we're having one here. It's been a fun weekend. Well, I know this is your first uh, full season as the executive director of the OSSAA, and what a way to start it out uh, as you move into a new century. I know the association has, has just continued to progress by leaps and bounds. The technology that we have today, the sophistication uh, of uh, the athletes and the people that you work with, and, and just a great showcase for the students uh, of Oklahoma Secondary Schools in Athletics and also uh, you uh, recognize academic champions here as well. Right, Tony. We have a number of different activities as well as our athletic programs. Uh, speech and music, obviously the bands that are playing here, the, the bands and palms that were part of the, the championship game last night in, in Tulsa are all part of that. Uh, we do recognize the state academic champions uh, in each sport and that's very important to us also. We certainly want to tie both of them together because there certainly is a tie between the, the academics and the athletics or activities that we, we sponsor and, and, uh, and sanction across the state. The uh, interest in high school act athletics in, in Oklahoma seems to be at an all-time high. Football, basketball, uh, you sponsor all the championships, a lot of crowd participation, uh, a lot of interest in the public into it. Where do you see the future of the OSSAA as we move into the new century and and what do you see the future of the uh, these championships growing? It appears to be Tony continuing to grow. You mentioned basketball and a number of our other activities. We just completed our cheerleading competition. Uh, unbelievably we're running out of sites to be able to host that. We have so many people in attendance which of course is a great problem. Uh, basketball the crowds are huge. The people are really seeming to turn back and have an interest in the young people. And I think that's nothing but positive. And we hope to be a positive part of that growth for the young people into this next century. I think the activity programs are very important. Every uh, survey that you do says the kids that are involved in the activity programs in the state or any, in any state are more apt to have higher grades, uh, better attendance. Uh, uh, anything that you would say about a youngster positively is going to come through activity programs uh, normally. I know if we had one downer today, it would be the weather. It's probably held down the size of the crowd, but they're very enthusiastic. You've got another game uh, coming up tonight. Uh, surprise team in Fort Gibson against uh, Weatherford. That's going to be an exciting game uh, for those teams in, involved. But overall, uh, you've had uh, an excellent high school football season and, and uh, again, getting geared up for basketball, and the work never ends. Yeah, you're right, Tony. We're, we are very excited about the year, and it, it's been great. Uh, we do appreciate your, your covering the game for us. Obviously, some fans that chose to stay home because of the weather, they are able to at least view it today. And not like being here, but it's certainly uh, better than not seeing it or, or knowing what's going on at all. Well, it's always a pleasure to work with you, Danny, and continued success uh, with the OSSAA. Thank you very much. Danny Reynolds, Executive Director of the Oklahoma Secondary Schools Activities Association. Here at halftime, the Class 5A State Football Championship, Carl Albert leads El Reno. 14 to 6, and we'll be back with highlights and more halftime activities here in a moment. The 2000 SUVs have finally arrived. At the Tulsa Auto Collection, you can save both time and money on the very latest SUVs from Ford and Lincoln Mercury. Get low, hassle-free prices on a huge selection of new Ford Explorers, Expeditions and Excursions, Mercury Mountaineers, and Lincoln Navigators. In fact, we have 14 four-door XLS Explorers, each priced at only $23,247. You save over $2,800. The 2000 models are here, so hurry and save both time and money at the Tulsa Auto Collection. You've made your decisions. you visualize how you want your home to look. When it's time to redecorate, there's no need to fight the 41st Street trap. Roll into the Carpet Center where it's easy to achieve your decorating dream. You'll find everything to give your home a finished, elegant look. And right now at the Carpet Center, you'll find stained master carpet on sale as low as $1.49 a square foot installed with half-inch, six-pound pads. Which way would you rather go? The Carpet Center, 121st and South Memorial. We at Mazio's know all about the pressures of the holidays. So to give you a break, we decided to simply play some relaxing holiday music and roll some nice product shots. 
Ah, forget this. Get a calzone ring plus 12 spicy wings for just $10.99. Or try the triple option. Any three 9-inch pizzas, any toppings, any crust for just $13.33. But remember, no pressure. Mazio's, the pizza people crave. My employees do right by me, and I try to do right by them. That's why we offer Blue Cross Blue Shield. I get calls from their competitors. They tell me their plans are as comprehensive and as good as Blue Cross, but I'm not going to assume anything. We're sticking with Blue Cross because they do right by me and my employees. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma offers you Oklahoma's largest network of doctors, hospitals, and other health care professionals. So when it comes to health insurance, don't assume anything. Always choose Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma. Welcome back to Lewis Field in Stillwater. It is getting a little bit nippy here. <laughs> uh, today I found that out when I walked next door. I think the uh, wind chill below freezing here, but uh, the fans having a good time. And right now, Carl Albert leading El Reno 14 to 6. Well, and your halftime guest, Danny, has been so accommodating. Uh, asked if we needed anything, and I said, yeah, a couple of space heaters. <laughs> I don't think that's what he had in mind. Probably not on their way up right now, but uh, <laughs> certainly I'm sure the teams are uh, getting warmed up a little bit at halftime in the locker room as uh, Carl Albert scored the first touchdown of the game after a miscue by El Reno and then a uh, field goal by uh, El Reno. Carl Albert came back with a touchdown and another field goal by the Indians. And you see the stats really about even. They've run close to the same number of plays. You're 200 yards rushing. Uh, they're Carl right Albert the is close, but El Reno is also close. They're both close, and, and if you look at it, uh, like I said, uh, don't want to put too much emphasis on it, but because Carl Albert will get the ball first in the second half, that series of that possession could have a lot to do with it, and they could go over 200 on the first play of that series. You see the passing yards, kind of like we expected. There wouldn't be too many of them. Penalties, uh, actually even. Now, Fada Carter evened that up with the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, uh, there's only been one flag thrown on El Reno, three on the uh, Carl Albert Titans, but the yardage is even, and that's really the important number there. Turnovers, that's the key. I mean, if you want to circle anything in the entire ball game that has been uh, the key so far, it has been the turnovers, and especially when you have one on your way into the end zone. All right, your other first was the first team to three touchdowns. That right could now, happen Carl Albert's at two. Exactly. Then, as you talked about, that first possession well, key, I, if they get to three. Two field goals equals one touchdown. There you go. So we'll, we'll give uh, El Reno credit for one. But uh, right now, are we got some, uh, yeah, some interesting uh, runners out on the field. Not as interesting as the guys that we saw during the first half. But I tell you, you, you got to be, you got to be pretty gutsy. and uh, Or have some antifreeze inside well, of you. Yeah, and that's probably. Let's hope that's not the case. Well, yeah, because this is a high school event. Uh, if it were uh, colleges going here, uh, I'd have to think that might be, uh, that might be possible. But. No, it's been a terrific first half, and uh, the, the good thing is, Tony, sometimes in games uh, that where teams meet during the regular season and put on a great show like these two teams did, the second matchup doesn't live up to the expectations. So far, this one has, and the other good thing about this ball game, you come in and you hype stars. You hype Santee Jackson. You hype Johnny Bazell. Fada Carter and Marshall Childs. So far, these guys are living up to expectations. Well, Santee Jackson, as we take a look at the first half highlights, uh, not much hype needed for this one. Right up the middle, 61 yards a touchdown. Jackson over 100 yards in the first half, unofficially 121. And actually, that's Johnny Bazell on the run, uh, spinning loose and getting the first touchdown. He had the 26-yard touchdown that got him on the board first. And uh, it's 77 yards for Bazell in the first half, and here's that run to Jackson. They fake to Bazell. He follows uh, Jackson, follows him through the hole, gets the lead block, and he's gone. Only touched by two defenders in blue on that play, and if you notice, before he was touched by a defender, he had had five yards past the line of scrimmage. That is a huge credit to that Carl Albert offensive line, and I think Johnny Bazell and Santee Jackson, 16 carries for 132 yards. That's for Jackson alone. I think both those guys would tell you that their offensive linemen have done them a job so far. No question about it. Uh, to our knowledge in the first half, no major injuries. That's a good sign also in a state championship. You love to see that, that the kids can play hard. They can uh, not be hurt and uh, have a good good chance uh, to show the public 
you know, just the kind of talent that they have. All right, uh, and I'm not a big fan of AstroTurf, but wet AstroTurf, in my mind, is just a little bit better than dry. We've got that second half coming up. You can see the captains getting ready to talk to the officials. We'll be back for the start of half number two in the Class 5A championship game. Stay with us. The 2,000 trucks have finally arrived. At the Tulsa Auto Collection, you can save both time and money on the very latest trucks from Ford. Check out the new Ford F-Series pickups from the largest truck selection in Oklahoma. Save on a new 2000 F-150 XL. It's priced at a hassle-free $14,493. Save on 2000 model Ford Rangers, all with $1,000 factory rebates and low hassle-free prices. The 2,000 models are here. So hurry and save both time and money at the Tulsa Auto Collection. At First National Bank and Trust, we got things rolling right after the turn of the century. And through the years, we've put a different spin on banking by staying true to our heritage and the people we serve. Now, when you visit our new quarters at 2100 North Aspen, you could win something as solid as banking with us during the next century. This 1999 American Eagle Collector Set, the last coins to be minted this millennium. Stop by today. First National Bank and Trust, right on the money, right where you live. Captains for both teams are headed out to the middle of the field to uh, set up the second half. Of course, uh, as we saw to, to begin with, Carl Albert kicked off El Reno, got the football, so you'd expect uh, Carl Albert to have the football in the second half. It's the captains meet there at uh, midfield, and we'll set it up. Still a few minutes to go uh, before the second half. The bands, unfortunately, because of the uh, weather, not able to perform at halftime. Uh, we do have the uh, cheerleaders and pom-poms out there, but they are all covered up today as well. Well, and, and we do have another state champion in the house as well. Over on the Carl Albert side, not only are they uh, state champion in football two times, they're state champion in cheerleading as well. Two-time defending state champions in cheerleading are the Carl Albert Titan cheerleaders. As we start the second uh, half, right. we will see Carl we'll Albert see. getting Let's the see. football as we expected here at the... East end of the field of this east-west field at Lewis Field, and El Rito will be kicking it off. Want to congratulate the 5A academic champions this year, Altus High School. The Altus High School football team with a grade point of 3.357. Congratulations to Altus High School for their fine academic work this year. We're just about set for the second half of action. Here at Lewis Field in Stillwater, the teams who will be coming out, they'll get that uh, mandatory three minutes to loosen up and do calisthenics to prevent injuries in the second half, and then we'll be set to go. The Carl Albert Titan Band, they're happy, they're ahead, they're looking for back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back state championships. We'll find out in the next 24 minutes of action whether Carl Albert can do it or whether El Reno can complete an undefeated season on the way to the state championships. We'll return with the second half kickoff here at Lewis Field in Stillwater right after this. And it's picking up speed every day. Are you ready? Tulsa Technology Center has hundreds of ways to prepare you for success in the workplace and to make sure business has got the qualified workers they need. From the nationally recognized Transportation 2000 and Craftsmanship 2000 programs to state-of-the-art medical, aviation, and business and industry training, Tulsa Tech has been bringing business and education together for over 30 years. Tulsa Technology Center, preparing people for success. You've made your decisions. you visualize how you want your home to look. When it's time to redecorate, there's no need to fight the 41st Street track. Roll into the Carpet Center where it's easy to achieve your decorating dream. You'll find everything to give your home a finished, elegant look. And right now, you'll find a great selection of ceramic tile in stock, starting at $4.99 a square foot in stock. Which way would you rather go? The Carpet Center, 121st and South Memorial. Tony Sellers and Robert Allen and our sideline man, Curtis Fitzpatrick, here at Lewis Field in Stillwater. Hope you're enjoying the sounds and pictures of the 5A state championship here on uh, Cox and Multimedia. And, of course, we want to take a look at some of the color here of the game and also uh, to thank some of the fine sponsors today for helping you to bring this championship 
to the people of Oklahoma. And, of course, we're talking about uh, Furniture Manufacturers Outlet, Burkhardt Furniture, Perfect Swing Family Fun Center, and Cox Communications and Multimedia Cable Vision. want to thank uh, Bob Richardson and Danny Reynolds and David Jackson of the Oklahoma Secondary Schools Activities Association and the staffs of both of these fine football teams, Rocky Carter and his staff for the El Reno Indians and Gary Rose and his staff for the Carl Albert Titans. You know, one thing last night watching the uh, 6A game at home, uh, in my living room, like I'm sure a lot of people are watching this 5A game. <laughs> Let me tell you, folks, it's a lot warmer in your living room than it is here in our booth right now. But uh, I heard, you know, Dave Rader talking about two outstanding coaches last night, Alan Trimble and also Bill uh, Blankenship there with uh, the Tulsa Union. And, you know, one thing that I've always judged a coach by is if you had a son, would you let your son play for that man? And I think it's unquestioned that you would love it to have your son coached either by Gary Rose or by Rocky Carter, the two coaches that we've got here today. And you can see using that space heater, they're trying to warm up those footballs a little bit and allow uh, the uh, players to get maybe a little bit better grip. But these are two fine, fine individuals. We get to work with them on a basis of preparing for a ball game. And second time for me this season is, uh, was part of the regular season meeting between the two. And I mean, they are gentlemen. Uh, to the highest degree. Great guys to work with. And as you can see, Carl Albert coming back on the field. This is causing a little bit of a delay because of the construction here at Lewis Field on the new Gallagher Iba Arena on the east end of the stadium. It's a little more difficult for teams to get to <laughs> and from the locker rooms. They actually have to go underneath the stadium as you look at the construction there that's going to be the new Gallagher Iba. The teams have to go underneath the stands and then come out at midfield and then come back through the stands to get back out on the field. So it takes a little longer yep. for the teams to get back out here. But the way I see it, Tony, you could actually say it saves a little time because at a lot of schools they bring fans, cheerleaders, students out of the stands and form a cheering line to allow the players to come out on the field. Well, you don't need to come out of the stands. Your cheering line can just be the stands because the players themselves are actually walking out of the stands onto the field for this. That uh, area you saw with the camera right there is actually a tunnel. It will be used in the future and was used some this season during the uh, Oklahoma State uh, college football season. Uh, but uh, they are doing construction. Actually, today there is work going on. They're working on weekends as well. So the players are having to come through the stands to come out of the locker room. Well, and there is uh, basketball at Gallagher Iber Arena tonight as well. All right. Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, there is still activity going on in that old building. In fact, the last event in there will be in March, the old Gallagher Iba, and that'll be a Bedlam basketball game. Curtis is down on the field, and I think he's got Gary Rose with him. All right, Robert, we're here with Gary Rose. Gary, your team's up 14 to 6. Are you satisfied with the way your team's playing? Uh, I'm satisfied being ahead, but we need to play a little better than we have been. We're not tackling very well on defense, but other than that, we're playing awfully well. We've got two good turnovers and uh, moving the football, so... We just keep that up for another half. We'll be okay. I guess we'll keep giving the ball up the middle to Jackson and uh, that's Zell, right? right? We, we're going to do that until they stop it, and uh, that may be for another 24 minutes. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks Good luck. luck. Thank you. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Curtis, and uh, simplicity. Sometimes it is it is so perfect, and it has been for Gary Rose, and that's exactly right. Why not keep giving those two guys the football? I like Curtis's first question. Are you satisfied? Don't ever ask Gary Rose if he's satisfied. That guy will always find something that his team can do better. And, you know, talking to his players, he's got a lot of players on this team that have been starters, believe it or not, since they were sophomores, have been starters on two state championship teams, have a chance to play their entire high school career and be nothing but state champions. Can you imagine that? You and I both played high school football. I never even came close, got into the playoffs once, lost in the first round, never had a chance to even play for a state championship in football. And these guys say, hey, what's the big deal? We're there every year. I don't know. At my high school in Texas, and we, we made the playoffs every year, but in Texas, it, our goal was to get to the second round. If we got to the second round, that would be like Carl Albert winning their state championship. That was the goal. Our goal was to practice Thanksgiving Day every year. That was the main goal. Well, that's just an old habit at uh, Carl Albert. El Reno certainly has had some great teams throughout the years, but they have never taken home the state championship. And if they're going to do it in 1999, they're going to have to come from behind. El Reno will kick it off to start the second half. A.J. Hagland will kick it off 
and deep to receive for the Carl Albert Titans is going to be Robert Jones. And, and he'll be wasted. Jones he hasn't had, had a chance no. to touch the football. The only man who's touched it on a kickoff has been Marcus Clayton, another one of those guys that's been a starter since he was a sophomore. And not, it's not that they don't want to kick the ball to Jones. It's just they like the pooch kick. And there it is again. It's headed right towards Clayton. This time he's going to run with it. He's at the 35 and across the 35 to the 37. Zach Birdsong was in it there on the hit. Also defensively, Brian Wasserman, a sophomore reserve running back, making the tackle. And it's going to be spotted at the 37-yard line. Carl Albert with their first possession of the second half. Be real important here for... Uh, for fans to watch the, the battle in the trenches. Carl Albert's offensive line uh, really in the second quarter started to control El Reno's defensive front. Let's see if they can continue to do that coming off the halftime break. Senior Landon Cordray puts the man in motion. That's Clayton on his way to the right. Hands off to Bazell, and Bazell has stopped quickly after about a one yard gain. Good job by the left side of the defensive line for El Reno. In on the tackle, Fada Carter making his presence felt. They'll give him forward progress to the 39, and it'll be second down and about eight yards to go. Tony, watching the Indian linebackers, they're playing up a little close to the line of scrimmage and actually playing right there on top, stacking with their defensive linemen. Jackson gets the handoff. He continues to push forward along with his offensive lineman and gets up near the 45-yard line. That'll make it third and about two. If you look at that El Reno defense the next time when they set up, all 11 defenders are within yeah. five yards of the ball. We talk about men in the box. They're uh, even inside the box uh, opening up the lid on the box. Well, and I think uh, that's exactly what I was about to mention. I think they are going to stack in there, probably do a lot of blitzing. That they haven't threatened it so far, but... Basically, what they're doing is putting their entire defense tackle to tackle to stop Mazzell and Jackson. Third down and three yards to go for the Titans. Hand off to Jackson. He's tripped up in the backfield, and he will be stopped at the line of scrimmage. And it's working. What they've adjusted now, it's going to be up to Carl Albert to make an adjustment as well. But the defensive adjustment, as you look at Mike Little, really the steadiest of those defensive players for El Reno, the adjustment they've made at halftime has worked, and they're going to get the football back with a chance to go down the field and perhaps even tie the ball game. Ryan Weaver will have to punt. The sky's getting darker here. The lights have been on since the start of the game. And in the punt is a line drive kick. It hits at the 15. Inside the 10, Haglin feels it at the 5. He's back to the 10 and spun out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Tackle made on the play by Anthony Langston. A.J. Haglund might have been better served to let that one bounce a couple of more times. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, certainly he took a chance trying to field it that way, but I don't know if I'm Rocky Carter that I'm not glad he did make the attempt and feel the football because Carl Albert was getting down there quickly. A couple of more bounces and you get away from it, you may have had the football on the one-yard line. You see the line drive kick that time. And you see Haglund going over. It takes a high bounce. He stuck his hand up, and once he touched it, he had no choice but to grab it and run. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. We will the quarterback, a new fullback. We saw Miller limping during halftime, and he is not in there for the second half. Childs gets the handoff, and he has short yardage around the right side. Well, and that could, uh, that could be a major impact. Brian Wasserman, a 5'10", 169-pound sophomore, moves into that fullback spot. Like you and I were talking at halftime, Tony, we noticed, or actually it's, uh, yeah, actually it's Kyle Whitney, number 30, that has moved in there, 5'11", 199. So we were talking at halftime. Uh, we did notice that uh, Trent Miller was limping and at times didn't even carry his helmet with him, and that's a bad sign. Second down, eight yards to go. Ball at the 13-yard line. Hand off to Childs, left side. Cuts it back up the middle across the 15. Close to the 17-yard line before he's knocked back. And it's going to be third down and about four yards to go for the El Reno Indians on their first possession of the second half. Looked like Carl Albert thought he might have lost the football. A couple of guys diving into the pile thinking they had a chance to get the football. 
The big loss there with Trent Miller is not only the fact he's a good ball carrier and a good receiver, but he is a clearing blocker. You run the power play, you run uh, Childs behind uh, Miller with the, uh, the opportunity to blow up a linebacker, and he is over on the sidelines. Trying to loosen up, it looks like the right leg. Third down, pitch over to Childs, cuts up, has a first down, breaks free, but can't keep his footing, and he is down at the 30-yard line. And actually, they'll spot it at the 28, but that's good enough for the first down, a 10-yard gain for Marshall Childs. Good look here at Childs taking the pitch, and here's where the vision works out. He comes through there, squeezes through two defenders, doesn't or is not able to keep his footing but i tell you what this kid's got great balance a lot of guys would have gone down right when they were hit if he had kept his balance it could have been a tying touchdown pitch to the right side this time he stumbles and that allows the carl albert defense to catch up michael roberson was in there on the play along with help and it's going to be second down and a loss of about three yards on the play. Robert Jones back there as well. They won't kick the football to him on the kickoff, so he decided to go up and get a piece of it on the tackle. Yeah, here we see it again on the sweep play. Just a toss play, but this is what we talked about with these two teams. You really are going to have a better opportunity to move the ball up the middle than you are going outside because both teams are athletic. Both teams have a lot of speed. Second down, 12. We will back to pass. It's complete. Short yardage may be back to the original line of scrimmage as the pass was complete to Josh Williams and a big hit made on the play by Marcus Clayton, all 5'5", five, five, 140 pounds of him. Josh Williams with the catch for El Reno. It's going to be third down and 10 after a two-yard gain. Here you see the pass. Look at the hit. Clayton right on him right away. Knocks him down. Good play there by uh, Clayton. You mentioned not a real big guy, but he wasn't afraid to stick his nose in there. Two wide receivers right on third down and 10. And now we will send out the receiver in the slot a little farther out. Back to pass. He's hit. Trying to get loose. Gets away from one man, but he will not get away from the final defender that brings him down. That's Ryan Kirk with the sack and the ball all the way back to the 18-yard line of El Reno, a loss on the play of 10 yards. Here you see it, and that uh, right there, the play is actually set up by Belvin, the linebacker, the middle linebacker on the blitz. He can't get Weewell down, but then Ryan Kirk comes to clean it up. Haglin has to punt. It's a low end-over-end -end kick, hits at the 40. It will roll across midfield, and finally, will die at the 47-yard line of Carl Albert territory, but excellent field position for the Titans midway through the third quarter. 6.08 left to go, and no scoring so far in the second half. All right, uh, we will come back as Carl Albert will try and take command here at the 5A state championship. Back right after this. For many years, many men have dreamed of being sent in by the coach to win the game. In reality, it can be tough out there, and injuries do occur. If you're unfortunate enough to experience an injury, make sure you're fully recovered before you get back into the game. If you don't, you could find yourself at the bottom of the heap without a leg to stand on. Everyone loves a hero, so take care and be one. This message brought to you by the Eastern Oklahoma Orthopedic Center. It's a seesaw battle out there. A glance here, a stare there. Straining, blinking, looking down the road. Is that the flag on the golf green? Do I need glasses or contacts? When things start to get a little blurry, follow your eyes to Dr. Angie Ballou at Family Vision Care of Broken Arrow. Professional and no quickie one-hour deals. Get your eyeballs rolling with Dr. Angie. Look for money-saving coupons in Swabips, 455-6767. We can see you now. Fourteen to six, Carl Albert leads it midway through the third quarter, and the Titans have the football at their own 47-yard line. They were unable to move it in three plays on the first possession 
of the second half, but we'll see if the running game can bust through that El Reno defense. It has all the men lined up at the line of scrimmage. Hamlin in motion, hand off Bazell. No, they fake it, give it to Jackson. And Jackson up to the midfield stripe, a gain of about three yards, and they mark it into El Reno territory, so give him four on the play, and it'll be second down and six. Couple of observations there. Watch El Reno line up in that I formation. Again, it's very tight in the backfield. Normally, your tailback would be seven yards off your quarterback or off the line of scrimmage. They're all squeezed in with about four yards of each other here. And then also Cordray, what a good ball handler he is. Doesn't have to throw the football a lot in this offense. His ball handling helps him out. Hand off to Jackson. He has stood up at the line of scrimmage. Big hit by Michael Pruitt. 6'1", 253-pound linebacker. And he stops Jackson for virtually no gain to make it third down and six. Well, we talked about the defensive adjustment, and Tony made a good point in that uh, 10 to 11, almost the entire El Reno defensive unit is tackle to tackle inside. We're going to watch it here. Quick handoff, and you see number 56 come up, and that's Michael Pruitt that makes the big stop there. But, boy, El Reno's just packing it in. Third down, handoff. Jackson bounces outside. 40, 30, foot race. He is at the 15 and knocked out of bounds at about the three-yard line by Josh Ritchie. And what a play by Sam T. Jackson breaking it to the outside. Well, the bad thing, when you stack everybody inside, Tony, if they get past that group, there's nobody back there to be your uh, palace guard and keep them from scoring. In this case, Jackson got through there and got all the way down to about the three-yard line. There's a flag penalty down. flag back at the 36 near the Carl Albert bench, and the officials are talking about it. Okay, 34. Personal foul on 34. Well, it's going to be way behind the play. After this, you guys want that, don't you? After this, you want it, right? All right. Now you see on the replay there, Jackson got past that packed-in defense and was able to get down inside the five. Back behind the play, Marshall Childs was guilty of a personal foul. 34. First and goal, he ball at about the one and a half yard line. Okay. All right. After the 46 yard run by Jackson. Jackson getting close to the 200 yard mark in this contest. Well, and Carl Albert is over the 200 yard mark as a team, and that was one of our first keys. And they're headed for that third touchdown. There's number two. Hand off to Jackson. He walks into the end zone. Touchdown. It's 20 to six. Carl Albert. Nothing fancy. Handoffs to the fullback, handoffs to the tailbacks. Well, the, the fancy thing about that, and I, I guarantee you, the mamas and daddies of those offensive linemen at Carl Albert will tell you it's real fancy. Huge hole. Jackson just, once he got the handoff, he could see a tunnel between him and those end zone stands of Lewis Field back behind the end zone. And we're talking about Mike Mitchell, Will Trent, Matt Hinton, Nathan Guerrero, and Jimmy Winters leading the way up front. Weaver adds the extra point. Timeout on the field, 440 to go in the third quarter. Carl Albert, 21, El Reno, 6 in the Class 5A state championship game. The 2,000 trucks have finally arrived. At the Tulsa Auto Collection, you can save both time and money on the very latest trucks from Ford. Check out the new Ford F-Series pickups from the largest truck selection in Oklahoma. Save on a new 2000 F-150 XL. It's priced at a hassle-free $14,493. Save on 2,000 model Ford Rangers, all with $1,000 factory rebates and low hassle-free prices. The 2,000 models are here. So hurry and save both time and money at the Tulsa Auto Collection. From contemporary oak wall units to hand-carved French country sleigh or spindle beds, Great Southern Bedrooms has an oak bedroom set for you. Or if the style and convenience of a futon sofa bed is what you need, we have the best quality hardwood frames and Sealy mattresses available. With a futon, you can change your second bedroom into a home office and still have a comfy bed when company visits. Great Southern Bedrooms, open every day at 51st Place in Sheridan. Great Southern Bedrooms, where fashion is in comfort second half but not the second time five plays 54 yards took just a minute 38 
to put the third touchdown on the board for the Carl Albert Titans. You know, the funny thing is, Tony, if you showed somebody the time of possession on Carl Albert scoring drives, they'd think they were a throwing team. They're just a quick hitting running team that doesn't waste time. They get it to the end zone, and usually they've got a huge big play. In that case, it was the 46 yard run by Santee Jackson that ended up getting them down there so where they could score quick. Line drive kickoff. This one is going to go through. It's Richie at about the six yard line up to the 25 30 and is down across the 30 at the 31 yard line. But Josh Richie's done a good job on kickoff returns for El Reno today, but the Indians just have not been able to penetrate well, the end zone. Well, I also, also noticed that uh, Charlie Fleming, I think, a new kicker in there kicking because Weaver got hurt making that tackle in the first half. Let's go downstairs, and Curtis Fitzpatrick's got an update from the sideline. Well, not really an update, but guys, you know, the Carl Albert football team has won two straight state championships, but their cheerleading team has also won a couple of consecutive state championships. Show us what you got, guys. So far, that uh, cheerleading is doing a pretty good job, but I tell you what's really doing a good job, Santee Jackson, Johnny Bazell, and that Carl Albert defense. You can see on that last play that uh, Marshall Childs is hurting with that knee, and it always hurts more when you're behind on the scoreboard a little bit, Tony. That time, Childs picked up nine yards, but again, you saw him favoring that right knee. The trainers are gonna have to help him off the field. Trent Miller is coming back in the game. He was back in defensively. But uh, it looks like Miller is going to line up as the tailback now. And uh, limping off the field is going to be Marshall Childs. And Kyle Whitney will be lined up. Uh, actually, Whitney is going to line up in the backfield. And Miller is going to line up at the wingback position as Childs making his way off the field. Childs able to come back after missing a couple of weeks with that strained ligament. But he's injured it a couple of times well, today. Again, uh, with the trainer there, Mark Huseman. Uh, leading him off the field, and it's been a frustrating day for Marshall Childs. Well, and you hate to see that because the kid's given a great effort today. Second and two, the handoff goes. That's going to be Whitney. To Kyle Whitney, and he picks up the first down. That's his first carry of the day. Whitney coming in, 5'11", 199-pound junior, was averaging uh, just under five yards a carry. 440 yards on the season and two touchdowns, and he picked up about five yards on that play, and it'll be first down and 10 for El Reno at the 44-yard line, but now the clock starting to become a factor as we're inside of four minutes to go in the third period. Single back in the backfield. We will back to pass, throws the route over the middle, and it's broken up by Marcus Clayton. Josh... Richie wanted a flag, but that was just good defense well, as Clayton came in to knock the pass away. A term you'll hear defensive backs talk about is jumping the route. When they recognize the route and where the pass is going, they'll come in, come in and jump it. In that case, Clayton saw the slant, knew it was coming. Watch him get there. He gets there the same time the ball gets there. You're going to have a tough time completing that. You know, rushing yards, we talked about that being such a key. We're going to take a look at the rushing yards so far as you see. Marcus Clayton, not a big guy, 5'5", 135-pound senior. Second down, 10 yards to go. Again, three wide receivers right. Back to pass. We will. He throws. It's complete outside to Richie. Puts a move on Clayton this time. Penalty flag comes flying in, and we may have a face mask call on Clayton there after the catch. And again, we're starting to see the uh, starting to see the number of pass attempts climb for uh, El Reno. Two out of eight so far on the day. That is the second completion, I believe, to Josh Ritchie. You guys want that? 15. So we hear the bigger. official talking to the uh, El Reno captain, and yeah, they'll take they'll take anything they can get at this point. Face mask on the defense. First down. And again, the 15 yards tacked on to the nine yards of the completion, so it turns out being a 24-yard play. Josh, we will three out of eight with an interception for 31 yards in the ball game, and it's first and 10, El Reno at the 33-yard line in Carl Albert territory. 
Whitney, the lone back in the backfield, gets the handoff. He's hit as he tries to turn the corner, and he is taken down by Josh Hamblin, 6'3", 202-pound senior linebacker. Now, Whitney is a good back sitting in that backfield for, Car or for uh, El Reno. 83 carries for 404 yards, averaged over five yards a carry on the season. But he's not Marshall Childs, and he's not Fada Carter, and he's also not Trent Miller. you got to remember, now in the backfield, you're down to what really would be your fourth tailback uh, coming into this ballgame. So injuries, attrition in the backfield has become a big factor for El Reno. Second and eight, we will back to pass, complete to Richie, hit by Clayton, spun around, and they're going to mark forward progress up near the 25. They'll mark it at the 20 six yard line a pickup of six yards on the play and it'll be third down and about three for el reno and that looks to be their favorite route here just the quick out route to josh ritchie here's we won all of the passes really for el reno will be quick passes at least the passes to the wide receiver they'll also throw the flat pass to the running backs and they've been known to use the uh, the utah pass or the shovel pass but these are teams, neither one of them, El Reno or Carl Albert, that are real sophisticated when you get to the passing game. Third down, three for the Indians. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. We will hands off to Whitney. Has a hole on the outside. First down inside the 20, down to the 17 before he runs over Clayton. And it's going to be a first down and 10 at the 17-yard line for El Reno. Whitney's a good-sized kid, about 5'11", 200. Watch Marcus Clayton. I like this kid's style. He says, I'm not backing down an inch. He got run over there, but Whitney went down. He got the job done. So you got to have a lot of respect for the 5'5", five, five, what is he, 100 and... They say 135 100 one place, 140 wet. the other place. <laughs> and he says he's been eating good lately. He's probably up to 140. <laughs> uh, he's got a lot of guts out there on the corner and didn't mind putting his head down and taking uh, Whitney out. Hayes in motion right, the pass under thrown, intended for Josh Ritchie. Isn't that number 10? That's number 10. So right now, the uh, advantages that we talked about are the keys, 200 yards rushing, first one to three touchdowns, both in, uh, both in favor of Carl Albert. The one negative stat we had talked about, or negative key, first one to 10 pass attempts, that's on El Reno's side of the ledger, and the scoreboard says 21 to three, Carl Albert. A.J. Haglund checks in, bringing in the play from the sideline. Second and 10 for El Reno from the Carl Albert 17. They trail it 21 to six, a minute 27 to go, third quarter. Haglund in motion left, pitch back. This time goes to Whitney, trying to get outside, and he won't be able to do it. Met by Chad Stuckey on the outside with help from Michael Roberson. A pickup on the play of about three yards, and it'll be third down and seven, and the clock continues to run into the final minute of the third quarter. Talked a lot about this. Here comes Stuckey coming up on Whitney. Well, you've got some good athletes playing on the outside for both of these teams that make it really tough to turn the corner. They just string everything out the back. Unless he gets a good cutback lane, is not going to be able to advance far downfield on those wide running plays. Gonna have to come up with a pass, I'm betting here. Third and seven, we will throws outside. It's complete again to Richie, taken out of bounds by Clayton at the 13. That's gonna be two yards short of a first down and it's gonna be fourth down and two. And I think at this point, uh, Robert, you're at the point where you really can't go for that third field goal, even though that would still leave you two touchdowns behind, that you've gotta think about getting it into the end zone here and El Reno's gonna take a timeout to think about it. Timeout on the field, 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. Our score, Carl Albert 21, El Reno 6. We'll be back with fourth down for El Reno in just a moment. The 2000 SUVs have finally arrived. At the Tulsa Auto Collection, you can save both time and money on the very latest SUVs from Ford and Lincoln Mercury. Get low, hassle-free prices on a huge selection of new Ford Explorers, Expeditions and Excursions, Mercury Mountaineers, and Lincoln Navigators. In fact, we have 14 four-door XLS Explorers, each priced at only $23,247. You save over $2,800. The 2000 models are here, so hurry and save both time and money at the Tulsa Auto Collection. 
You've made your decisions. you visualized how you want your home to look. When it's time to redecorate, there's no need to fight the 41st Street traffic. Roll into the Carpet Center, where it's easy to achieve your decorating dream. You'll find everything to give your home a finished, elegant look. Right now, our great selection of area rugs are 50% off, starting at $99 each at the Carpet Center. Which way would you rather go? The Carpet Center, 121st in South Memorial. about to talk about it before fourth down and let's go down to Curtis Fitzpatrick for an injury report on the sidelines. All right, Tony, as you can see, Marshall Childs has ca uh, calf cramps and spasms. It's not a knee injury. His knee was not re-aggravated when he got injured. And as you can see, he's in serious pain and both of his legs are being iced down in a bucket of ice and his return is very questionable at this point. One thing that will cause those cramps when you have that brace and when you've had that injury is it puts a lot more strain on those calf muscles, and that's probably what's happened. Uh, I, I think you're exactly right. That, and you cannot straighten the knee out. You're in a bent position on that leg most of the uh, most of the day. Fourth down play. They run Whitney up the middle, and it looks like he's got the first down. Good effort by Kyle Whitney. He broke the initial tackle, spun off to the left, and was able to get the first down yardage inside of the six-yard line on a big fourth down play. And El Reno's drive is still alive, first and goal at the six, with 36 seconds left to go in the well, quarter. Well, and this is that was that was huge because El Reno has got to get a touchdown here. Kyle Whitney, and we talked about him being the fourth option right now in the backfield, but he is a very good runner, over 400 yards on the season just a junior he'll be the fullback more than likely for Childs next season and off to Whitney he's hit at the five and will be stacked up there good tackle that time defensively by Mike Dunn 